This podcast is for the short story Barn Burning by William Faulkner, which begins on page 339. This is a pretty challenging story, so I'm just going to skip through it section by section. It might be a good idea to read part of it and come back to the podcast to catch up with everything and make sure that you understand everything, read a little bit more, come back, and so on. Nonetheless, uh, we'll start at the beginning of the story, even though we most likely introduce the story in class a little bit. It starts out in court, and this courtroom seems to be a makeshift one uh, that doubles as a store uh, during the daytime. And we see that the boy, Sardi, his father, has been accused of burning down a barn. And the judge is getting testimony from both sides, but basically he doesn't have any proof that he's actually done it. Uh, the boy is called before the judge, and we are able to get into his head, and we see that in the italics, of course. And we see that what drives him is this kind of blood connection to his father, uh, that he thinks that he needs to lie. He's obviously done this before. This establishes that. And he does so, uh, you know, knowing that his father threatens him, knowing that he's supposed to, that the judge is the enemy, and so on. So, nonetheless, the judge knows that he's guilty of it, but just doesn't have any proof, so he tells him to get out of town, basically. Uh, then there's a scene on 341 where somebody yells at the father, calling him a barn burner. And one thing we have to keep in mind is that you know, this would have been seen as a, a pseudo-act of terrorism at the time. Uh, burning down somebody's barn would obviously affect his livelihood, uh, would kind of ensure that he weren't killing any people, but that it, it could burn the animals to death and so on. Uh, and also, it would be less of a chance of getting caught than, say, burning down the person's house where the people actually would be able to see you. Uh, and so, when this person yells it out, Sardi, again, who is driven by his blood connection to his father, to his family, uh, goes and attacks the man, and then there's a description, this is on page 341, of how he is beaten by whoever he attacks, uh, and they get into the truck and leave town, into the wagon, uh, and on 342, we see that they're basically a nomadic family and that they stop wherever his father can find work. And it seems like they're headed toward a place where he's going to be a sharecropper. And this seems to be a cycle, that they go from place to place, and Sardi is too young to fully understand it, uh, other than understanding that it's abnormal. And so Faulkner allows us to actually go into the mind of the future Sardi on page 343. We see that it's established for the first time. About four lines down. Later, 20 years later, he was to tell himself, if I said they only wanted truth, justice, he would have hit me again, you know, in reference to his father. And so this allows us to see from an adult perspective how he will or would feel about his father's behavior. And this continues throughout. So the mother is in a situation where she's stuck. Uh, he goes from place to place, seems to get into an argument, a fight with anybody uh, about anything, and ends up burning down their barn. Uh, we see a little bit more of that future point of view on page 344 in italics. And this is what Sardi will think years from now in terms of his father's behavior. And then, if actually, if you turn back to 343, you have to have some respect for the father, even though um, you know, his actions are deplorable. About halfway down the page, in paragraph 37, you look at his situation. Um, he says, I reckon I'll have a ward with the man that aims to begin tomorrow owning me body and soul for the next eight months. That if we look at this from a Marxist perspective, a class perspective, the, the father is in a helpless situation, um, and this person he's going to meet, Despain, uh, you know, 
reeks of uh, the aristocracy of, of uh, somebody who is rich simply because of his name and who has all the power, authority, and money uh, that the father has no access to whatsoever, uh, has no ability to improve his situation based on the economic situation. And that was the case for uh, sharecroppers in the South. And so he goes into the house and picks a fight. Page 345, he looks at it, and he says that basically the house was built from slave sweat. Okay, this is about 15 lines down on 347, which is true, the plantation. And then when it comes to sharecroppers, of course, white people or black people could be sharecroppers. And so he says, maybe it ain't white enough yet to suit him. Maybe he wants to make some white sweat with it. So even though the father just seems to have a problem with authority in general and his decision to burn down people's barns is pretty you know, immature and indirect, uh, we still see that he has some purpose, that he has a sense of justice and right and wrong, uh, that he feels the whole world is against him and that he's fighting against this injustice. So regardless, he walks in and he wipes his foot in feces and then scrapes it on this nice carpet okay and just you know basically tries to ruin the carpet walks out then later on the suggestion the only requirement is that he washes it you know not that difficult that he washes the carpet and when they take it to him on page 345 at the bottom there what does he do he says all right I'll tend to this this is paragraph 52 and you know the mother is saying no Abner let me do it you know, and she knows what he's going to do she knows he's going to not clean it right and so he gets lye uh, basically bleach and says I'll clean the carpet and he ruins the carpet irreparably this time and uh, takes it back right so then on 347 the penalty is that he has to pay for the rug, you know. And so now he's indebted to this man, and this only drives the father's anger even more. And you see at the bottom of 347 in italics there that Sardi seems to have almost this kind of battered woman syndrome, the idea that, like, maybe this is the last time, like, maybe he's going to change, uh, maybe this will be the end of it. And in italics there, you see that he has this hope uh, that this is the case, but, of course, the father's not going to change his mind and he's actually questioned by the judge on th the top of 348 and Sardi is so used to lying for his father and saying that he didn't burn down somebody's barn that that's actually the response he gives about eight lines down there he ain't done it he ain't burnt and he thinks he needs to lie about a barn but meanwhile it's just about the carpet and so that's why the judge says you know do I understand this rug was burned too? The judge is confused because it's a little case about only the rug that he ruined. So, regardless, on 350, this is right after the father at the bottom of 349 decides to burn down Despain's barn and tells him to go get the oil. And Sardi, as part of this coming of age story, feels this impulse to run, this impulse to leave, to you know, essentially uh, rip apart that blood connection uh, that's driving him to protect his father, to follow his father, and to get out. And the only way that he can do that, though, um, is to turn in his father. Uh, if he just runs and leaves and that's it, uh, they can come and find him, um, and he's not completely free. So... The son is about to, and it's an interesting moment at the bottom that he needs the help of his family. Uh, this is paragraph 97. And his mother's holding him back. Uh, she knows what it would mean if he were to go tell him the father. I mean, this is going to be swift justice from this vein that they're going to hunt him down and shoot him. Uh, she'd lose her husband, and even though she wants out of this situation, it's obviously a difficult thing for her to do. And the aunt as the mother's holding him back, holding Sardi back, 
Look at paragraph 98. The ant says, let him go. If he don't go before God, I'm going up there myself. And they're trying to break the cycle, the toxic cycle that is driven by blood, that is driven by this familial connection. And so he goes to, to Spain at the top of 351, and all he's able to get out is barn, barn, and this gives him the information that he needs. And he fetches his horse, the Spain does, and he goes and shoots his father. Okay. Uh, at the end, still, Sardi is saying, Father, my father, he was brave. Uh, he was a colonel in Colonel Sartorius's cavalry, which is, is kind of a lie. Uh, early on in the story, it's mentioned that it seemed like the father during the Civil War was a horse thief, uh, and he didn't fight in the army, that the limp that he had, the sort of stiffness that he walked with, was a result of being shot. Uh, after stealing some Confederate horses. So you know, he's been a criminal his whole life. Uh, but nonetheless, Sardi obviously uh, feels terrible for what he's done. And at the end of the story, he leaves and does not look back. 